Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Storytime with Grandma Kate. It's Halloween week. So this time around, we're going to be reading Junie B. Jones. Boo! And I mean it. Uh, this whole story will be in one playlist, so you won't have to wait for the next story time to hear what happens next. So in this chapter, or excuse me, in this video, we're going to be reading chapters one and chapter two. Chapter one is called Secrets. Remember, Junie B is a first grader in this book, or in this series of books, and so she starts off every book with a, a journal entry. So this is how it starts. Chapter one, Secrets, Friday. Dear first grade journal, my daddy went away on a business trip this week. He is doing job interviews. Job interviews is when you put on a suit and you wear a tie and you beg people for a job. I wish daddy did not have to do job interviews right now. Because Halloween is coming tomorrow and I am afraid of that scary holiday. From Scaredy Junie B, first grader. P.S. I am not telling anyone that I'm scared of Halloween or else they will tease me probably. Children are like that. I put down my pencil and thought about Halloween some more. Then I did a little shiver. On account of last year, a boy named Polly Allen Puffer told me five scary secrets about that day. And he said I am not allowed to tell anyone or else a witch will turn my head into a wart. I made a sick face and I tried not to think about that situation. Only how can you not think about a situation if you're trying not to think about a situation? I tapped my fingers, very frustrated. Then all of a sudden I saw my journal on my desk and a good idea came into my head. Because sometimes if you write your problems in a journal, it makes you feel better about things. That's true, I keep a journal and I agree with Junie B. Writing does make me feel better about things. I heard that on the Home Shopping Network, oh, excuse me, I heard that on the Home Shopping Network, they were selling journals, I believe. I quick opened the pages and I started to write Five Scary Secrets That Polly Allen Puffer Told Me by Junie B. Jones. Number one, real monsters and witches go trick-or-treating on Halloween, only they don't even wear costumes on account of everybody thinks they're already dressed up but they're not. They are wearing their real actual face and clothes. Number two, do not carve pointy sharp teeth in your pumpkin or else it will roll into your room while you are sleeping and eat your feet. Bats, excuse me, number three, bats like to land on your head and live in your hair. Number four, black witch cats can claw you into shreddle. And number five, Candy corn isn't really corn. I think the only one of those I believe is number five. Candy corn is not real corn. I put down my pencil again and I read over the secrets. That candy corn one is shocking, I tell you. Writing my problems did not make me feel better. I put my head on my desk and I covered up and I covered up with my arms. Just then I heard my teacher's voice. His name is Mr. Scary. That is a good Halloween name, I think. Only he actually uses it for the whole entire year. He said to please take out our arithmetic books. I kept on staying covered up. Cause how can I do arithmetic when there's scary secrets in my brain? All around me, room one got out their books. I took my sweatshirt from the back of my chair and I tucked it next to my ears. Sweatshirts help block out classroom noise. And pretty soon I heard my teacher again. Junie B, are you all right back there? He asked. Only before I could even answer, a tattletale girl named May started blabbing her head off. No, Mr. Scary, Junie Jones is not all right, she said. Junie Jones is not paying attention, as usual, she thought for a second. And Junie Jones has been doing other bad stuff too lately, she said. 
like yesterday, she ate half a sandwich from her lunch during lunch during silent reading. Only I couldn't even tattle on her because you said if I keep on tattling, I will get a note sent home. And so thank goodness that you were finally on the ball today. After that, room one got very silent and Mr. Scary didn't say any words. I felt shaky inside. He was thinking of a punishment from a punishment for me, probably. Finally, I raised my head and I peeked one eye at him. He was sitting at his desk writing a note. I did a groan. Mm -hmm. It was to my mother, I think. I started to hide my eye again. Only then, Mr. Scary got up very calm and he came to the back of the room and he gave the note to me. I could not believe my eyeball. Please take this note home to your parents, he told her. May's whole mouth came open at that shocking news. <laughs> Here's a funny picture. There's Junie B. Jones hiding. And there's May, shocked. What do you think that note says? I hope that it says that May likes to tattle and she should not be doing that. This is May talking. No, Mr. Scary, no, 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 please don't make me take that note. Please, 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 I wasn't tattling. I promise I wasn't. I was just saying that I'm glad you're on the ball today. That's all I was saying. I was saying that I'm glad for you. Mr. Scary smiled. Thank you, May, you're very kind, he said. And then he bent down next to her and he stuck the note in her backpack. I reached over and tapped on him. That note was long overdue, I said. Mr. Scary sucked in his cheeks at me. Please sit up, Junie B, he said. His voice did not sound happy. Now, he said. I quick sat up. Okie doke, I'm sitting. See me sitting, Mr. Scary, I said. Plus, also, I am going to get out my arithmetic book, I think. I found it in my backpack. Yes, siree, here it is. I've got my book and so I'm all set to do arithmetic now, I said. Mr. Scary kept on standing there. I looked up at him. All righty, you can be heading on back to your desk, I said. He still did not move. I waved my fingers. Keep in touch, I said. Mr. Scary bent down next to me and he talked real serious in my ear. You need to pay attention in class, Junie B, he said. I shouldn't have to tell you that. <sighs> I did a sigh. Then I leaned over and I whispered to him real private. Yeah, only I've got something in my head that's bothering me today. I explained on account of scary Halloween is coming tomorrow and I don't actually like it very much. Just then May's ears perked up. That girl has x-ray hearing, I tell you. Hey everybody, Junie Jones is scared of Halloween, she shouted. I just heard her say it. Junie Jones is a scaredy cat baby about Halloween. All of room one turned around and looked at me. Really? Said my bestest friend named Herbert. You're scared of Halloween, Junie Jones? I, Junie B, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either, said my other friend named Shirley. How come you're scared of Halloween? Just then a boy named Sheldon jumped up at his desk and he talked real loud. Well, I'm not scared of Halloween, that's for sure, he said. He stood there a second and then he did a little frown. Except for last year, Dan, Daniel Del Monte dressed up like Mr. Potato Head and he jumped out at me from a bush and so I had to drop my bag and run. Room one laughed and laughed. Sheldon frowned bigger. It wasn't funny, he said. I had to start my candy from scratch. May rolled her eyes. Who cares, Sheldon, she said. The thing is that Junie Jones is scared of Halloween this year. That makes her a scaredy cat baby. She leaned across the aisle at me. B. A B Y spells baby, she said. I crossed my arms at that girl. Oh yeah? 
spelled T-A-T-L-T-A-I-L, spells tattletale, I said back. Mr. Scary looked down at me. He shook his head no. I thought for a second, and then I tried again. T-A-T-A-L-T-A-L-E, spells tattletale, I said. Mr. Scary did a wince. I tapped my fingers on my desk. Then I took one more crack at it. T-A-T-A-L-T-A-I-L spells tattletale. Mr. Scary closed his eyes. I put my head back down on my desk. He covered me up with my sweatshirt. And I appreciated that. Are you scared of Halloween? Do anything, does anything in Halloween scare you? When I was little, I liked dressing up to go trick or treating, but I never liked scary movies. I wasn't, or scary stories or scary movies. I wasn't a fan of that. Even when I was a teacher, I didn't like gross, scary stuff. I know Papa likes gross, scary, scary movies, but I do not. Well, anyway, chapter two is called Candy Corn. That afternoon, I zoomed to my house from the bus stop and I ran in my front door as fast as lightning. Tattletale, T-A-T-T-L-E-T-A-L-E, -T -T -E -T -E, spells tattletale, I hollered. After that, I used the word in a sentence. Tattletale, May is a big fat tattletale. I heard my grandma's voice. Junie B, honey, is that you, she called. I'm in Ollie's room, come back and see us. I circled my hands around my mouth. Okay, I hollered again. Okay, spells okay. After that, I hurried back there very fast and I hugged my grandma real tight. Did you hear me spell tattletale? I said, I looked that word up in my dictionary at school on account of May tattletailed on me today. Grandma Miller was changing Ollie's clothes. And she shook her head at that news. Oh dear, not more trouble with May, she said. Honestly, Junie B, you're just going to have to ignore that girl. I crossed my arms. Yeah, only how can I even ignore her when she calls me a scaredy baby, I said. She told all the children that I am scared of Halloween, Grandma. Only if they knew, that, knew what I know about Halloween, she would be scared too. Grandma looked curious at me. What are you talking about, she asked. What is it that you know? I swallowed very hard and then I made my voice quieter. I know five scary secrets. That's what I know, I said. Only I'm not even allowed to tell anyone or else my head will turn into a wart. Chills came on my arms. Polly Allen Puffer told me that, I whispered even softer. Grandma Miller wrinkled her eyebrows. Polly Allen Puffer, she said. Wasn't he the boy who told you that a monster lived under your bed? I nodded my head. Yes, that's the exact same Polly Allen Puffer, I said. He knows lots of scary stuff, Grandma. On account of Polly Allen Puffer has a brother who's in eighth grade. And eighth grade is almost as old as a grown up. Grandma did a little smile. That's not really that old. Eighth grade is like 13, 13 or 14. And really a grown up, I would say at least is in their mid to late twenties. I didn't really grow up until I was in my thirties in some ways. In some ways I'm still not grown up. That's why I like Junie B. Grandma did a little smile. And then she finished buttoning Ollie's sweater and she put him on the floor to, to, to walk to me. Ollie does not walk that professional. He teeters and totters and weevils and wobbles. He fell down on my foot. And then he patted my shoe very nice. And he said the word moo. Moo is Ollie's favorite word. He is not the sharpest tool in the barn. That means he's not real smart, but he's just a baby. He's a smart baby. He just doesn't know a lot of words yet. What's your favorite word? If Ollie's favorite word is moo, what's your favorite word? My favorite word is a word that sounds like what it is. It's splash. That's my favorite word because splash sounds like what you do when you jump in the pool. Splash. Anyway, grandma bent down to pick him up and I touched her softy white hair. 
bats would love that hair, I believe. I wouldn't go out on Halloween if I were you, Grandma, I said. Not with that head of hair. Grandma did a little frown, and then she fluffed her hair very much. Why? What's wrong with my hair? Don't you like it? Can you see Grandma's hair? I sometimes put my hair up like that, but it's not all the way white yet. I got a little white in it, but not a whole lot of white. I zipped my lips shut because I said too much already, I think. Grandma Miller fluffed some more. Speaking of Halloween, your mother is coming home from work early today, and she wants to take you to the store to buy your costume. Just then, more chills came on my arms. I started backing out of Ollie's room very slow. Yeah, only I might not want to buy my costume today, I said. I might want to buy it tomorrow or the next day or uh, never, possibly. I kept on backing up. Okay, well, I think I will go take a nap now, Grandma. And so when Mother gets home, please tell her not to bother me. I did a salute. Thank you and good night, I said. After that, I turned around and I ran to my room and I closed the door real quick. A second later, I opened it a tiny crack. Yeah, only don't forget what I told you, I called. Do not go out with that head of hair on Halloween because that is just asking for trouble, Helen. Grandma Miller called back at me. She said, please do not call her Helen. I shut my door again. And then I picked up my favorite stuffed animal named Philip Johnny Bob, and I hurried to get in bed. If we pretend to be asleep, maybe I won't have to go to the scary Halloween store with mother, I told him. Philip quick pretended to snore. I tapped on him. Yeah, only she's not actually home yet, Phil, I explained. Plus, I need to tell you the five scary secrets because I can't tell them to real actual people, but you don't count probably because your ears aren't really real. Philip Johnny Bob felt his ears with his front foot. Really? You're kidding me, he said. My ears aren't real? Are you sure? Because they really, really feel real, don't you think? I felt his ears. Yes, Philip, they do feel real, but they're just made out of cloth. Philip Johnny Bob kept feeling his ears, and so finally I had to take his foot away. After that, I made my voice go into a whisper, and I told him the five scary secrets. First, I whispered the secret about the monsters and the witches, and then I whispered the secrets about the bats and the pumpkins and the cats, and finally, I whispered the secret about how candy corn is not actual corn. His mouth came open at that one. Oh, no, he said, that can't be true. Candy corn has got to be corn. It has corn right in the exact name. Plus, it even looks like corn, kind of. And so if it isn't corn, what kind of vegetable is it? I did a shrug. I don't know, Phil, I said. It can't be peas, because peas are roundish and greenish. Right, said Philip. And it can't be carrots because carrots are longish and crunchish. He thought some more. <laughs> then both of us looked at each other. Maybe Polly Allen Puffer's big brother is wrong about the corn, I said. Yeah, he's got to be wrong, said Philip. Candy corn is definitely corn. There's nothing else it could be. I nodded, but the, scare, but the other scary secrets are true, I bet. You can just tell they're true by the sound of them. Like, why would a real actual monster put on a costume if he already looks like he's wearing one? I know, said Philip. And the pointy sharp pumpkin teeth make sense too. Cause what good are pointy sharp teeth if you can't eat feet? Right, I said. And you know that bat and cat secrets are true too. Cause what bat wouldn't want to live in grandma's softy hair? And witches' cats can definitely claw you into shreddle, said Philip. I don't know what shreddle is, like shred. Like to shred something means to tear it up. So I guess Junie B thinks shreddle is like something that's all torn up. That makes sense. Philip looked at me. Maybe you shouldn't go trick-or-treating this year, Junie B, he said. Maybe you should just stay right here with me, all safe and sound, right in your own house. I hugged him very tight. 
pet elephant is very supportive. And there's Philip Johnny Bob. I love these imaginary uh, conversations she has with Philip Johnny Bob. There's another book where, and a Junie B book where she talks with him. I think he's a very understanding elephant. <laughs> so in our next chapter, in our next story time, we're going to be reading chapter three. That's called Squirty. I wonder what squirts in chapter three. And then chapter four is called The Halloween Store. So Junie B will be going to the Halloween store after all with her mom. So stay tuned for the, the next two chapters or take a break and come back whenever you're ready. Uh, but in any event, let me know in the comments below what you're going to be for Halloween this year. I can't wait to see. So until our next story time, have a great day. Bye-bye.